Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial from ProducerTech's Synth Courses. In these lessons, I'm going to guide you through each area of Omnisphere to enable you to fully grasp its awesome potential. The instrument fuses synthesizing and sample-based techniques with an array of filtering, modulation, and effects to produce a massive range of sounds. On the course, I'll be working in detail through each stage of the instrument's architecture, from the initial sound generators right through to the application of different effects and performance settings. So you can see how to go about creating a number of different sounds. If you have any questions, then you can contact me on rob at synthcourses.com or by going to the ProducerTech forum. Let's get started then. Omnisphere is more comprehensive than most soft synths in that it has multi-timbrality built in. This means that you essentially have up to eight instances of Omnisphere in one here. It's not necessary to use them all, of course, and you can just use one to create perfectly acceptable sounds, as you'll learn. Right now, I have a multi-patch loaded, called Galactic Evasion, and this has four parts, so basically like four instances of Omnisphere here, all running at the same time. When I play a note, you can hear it's a complex sound with lots of different parts to it. The different parts in the multi are selected using the numbered switches on the header, after which all of their settings can be adjusted on the main front panel below. So you can see that clicking on the first four switches clearly changes the settings below, as well as bringing up a different name in the lower display. This is the patch display, and is indicating that each of the four parts in the multi has a different Omnisphere patch loaded into it. Then the last four parts are all empty, so it won't produce any sound. The multi-switch at the end brings up the onboard mixer, and this clarifies what we've just been seeing. So you have all eight available parts displayed, with the first four having patches loaded, and the last four being inactive. This mixer has level sliders for adjusting the volumes of parts, mute and solo buttons for temporarily switching off a part, or just hearing that part on its own, and various other dials that we'll look at later on. So we can now mute and solo different parts to hear the various components of the sound. And if we need to change the overall volume, then we can use the slider on the header bar, as this controls the output gain of the instrument. To try out another multi, you can just click on the arrows next to the display, after which the next multi in the list will load up. So we can see now that this one has three parts. Only thing is, when I play notes, we're only triggering one of the parts, as you can see by the meter on the mixer and also the part switch illuminating at the top. The reason for this is shown on the header here, where it says stack mode. This means that the parts have been mapped to different areas of the keyboard, so they're triggered by different ranges of MIDI notes. If I click on the stack switch here, you can see that when I play the MIDI notes again, I'm only in the range that triggers retro cello bass. So I'd have to play MIDI notes in a higher register to hear the other parts. Or shift the parts down so that they're all triggered by the same notes should I want to. This kind of multi-editing is already quite advanced though, and certainly not something you need to be doing right away. I was really just showing you just so that if you first start playing around and are wondering why you can't hear certain parts, then you know what's going on. The other way to load up a multi is to click on the display, which calls up the multi-browser. This then shows you a list of all the multis, which just need to be clicked on once to load them up, as the auto-load switch is selected at the top. Some of these can take a while to load, so you have the option of changing to preview load, so you can speed up the auditioning of sounds. Also, if you want to narrow down the multi-list, you can click on a different category to refine your search. What I'm actually going to do now, though, is get rid of the multi 
and start with the sound from scratch, as this will help you to understand the synth's architecture more clearly than browsing through multis will. So I'm going to control click on the multi display, right click if you're using a PC, and then choose clear multi. This brings up a warning window, asking if that's really what I want to do. Don't worry about this, it's just checking you're not getting rid of a multi you haven't saved, so clearing it won't delete it from the saved list. Now I can close the browser window, and you can see the multi window says default, as do all the parts on the mixer. If I play a note now, you can hear we get some sound, and it's coming from part 1. So if I click on part 1 now, we can take a look at what's going on. Firstly, at the top, we could use the patch display to load up a factory patch. This is a pre-configured sound that will then be loaded into this part. We can do this in a similar way to loading a multi. So we can click on the display to load up a browser, only this time it's the patch browser. And then once again we have a list of options to choose from, only here it's a very extensive list. However, we can narrow it down once again by first choosing a category, like pads or bass, and then choosing some attributes from the list alongside, like edgy underground and old school after which you can see the list is a lot shorter. I've chosen this criminal base patch for now. The default screen for the patch is the main control screen, and this is basically a cut down version of the main edit screen, which contains some of the most important controls for editing sounds. So, in the bottom left corner, there's the part level, which is a duplicate of that on the multi mixer, as you can see. Then, in the middle, we can see what's actually creating the patch. Every Omnisphere patch can be constructed using two layers, which can be a sample or a synthesized sound. So, Omnisphere is like a synth with two oscillators. Only the oscillators can be used in oscillator or sample playback mode a bit like a wavetable synth. This bass sound is made using two samples. The first, on layer A, called Futuronica, is a sample of classic Waldorf and Korg hardware synths, which I can see by clicking on the plus magnifying glass to open up the sound source zoom, which is then closed by clicking on the minus magnifying glass. And the second one, on layer B, is simply a 440Hz sine wave sample, which is one of the utility waves. We can hear these layers individually by turning them on and off using the switches or using the level sliders above. Not every patch uses both layers, as you can actually make decent sounds with just one. If I first switch to Info View, so you can see the basic information of sound sources used for each layer, then scroll to the next bass sound in the list, nasty attitude base, then you can see that layer B is actually empty, and layer A is simply a sine wave, yet it sounds like this. So there's a lot being done to this sine wave, mainly by syncing and modulation of the oscillator. In the middle of the main control section, we also have panning controls for each layer. And note that if you want to reset a control, then you just command click it or control click it if using a PC. Then, at the bottom of the middle section, there are the master filter controls, those being cutoff and resonance, with filter type select switches in between. So you can set it to a low pass filter if wanting to cut out the high frequencies, or a high pass filter if wanting to cut out the bass. Don't worry if you're not sure what a filter is exactly, as we'll be going over that in more detail in the filter module later on. And the remaining controls on either side are various patch settings that we'll cover later on when looking at the sections that are relevant to them. I will say, however, that this solo switch here is not a solo control in the mixer sense, 
but in fact changes the part from monophonic to polyphonic, just in case you were wondering. Again, polyphony will be explained later on the course. For now, let's look at the remaining displays here. The edit display switches the front panel to a more comprehensive set of synth controls. All of the controls from the main window can be found here, mostly down either side, although certain controls from that display, like the sound source types, require you to select A or B using the tabs in order to access them. This display is more like a regular synth, with an oscillator section, and then sections for filters, envelopes, and LFOs. All of these sections have zoom windows for accessing additional parameters. The way the envelopes and LFOs, as well as the other modulators, are all being used to modulate the synth's parameters, can be viewed in the modulation section, which can be expanded using the zoom feature to see everything that's going on in the patch. In here, we can see that there are five modulation assignments being applied to the oscillator and filter controls in layer A, which is only a fraction of what the synth is capable of, as there are two pages here, allowing up to 24 different modulations to be set up. The FX display is for applying effects to each layer independently, or both layers together, with four slots for all. So for this patch, I can see we've got a tape slammer and vintage EQ being applied. But I can turn these off temporarily using the power switches and have a go at applying some effects myself by clicking in the free slot below. As you can see, the list is extensive, and we'll be working through these effects in more detail later on the course. The last display for each part is the arpeggiator, which is a performance mode that allows you to create rhythmic patterns by holding down one or more notes. Again, rather than get into the specifics, as these are covered later in the course, I'll just show you that you can turn the arpeggiator on and off, either using the switch in its section, or the one in the main display, which also allows you to choose a particular preset that sets the arp up in various ways in order to produce a range of different effects. Last thing I'll show you on the front panel is a cool feature that is both fun and practical. It's the visualizer in the main display window, and it shows you what a part looks like in one of two ways. You can either set it to oscilloscope mode, which shows you the part's waveform, or spectrum analyzer mode, which shows you its frequency content. So it's great for getting technical and seeing how different synth controls affect the waveform and spectral shape. So that's the end of Module 1. Hopefully now you've got a better understanding of the way Omnisphere is structured, and can see the potential for creating all sorts of amazing sounds. Don't worry if you got a bit lost at various points, as we'll be going over things more gradually and in much greater detail as we work through the course. Next time we're diving into the start of the sound creation process, and having a thorough look at Omnisphere's sound sources and oscillator controls. See you then. Yeah. <laughs>